All right, so let's do a sample walkthrough of the two functions of SKN, cleanup and tone. We're gonna go real quick to show you what's possible. Don't have any presets or anything like that. We're gonna use this literally out of the box. So I have a shot that's been color corrected in raw and exported into Photoshop. Beyond that, it's unedited. So on cleanup, I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna let the panel run its process. Now, depending on 8-bit, 16-bit, 21 megapixel, 60 megapixel, the process could take 10 seconds or 40. But once it's done, we have flexibility, okay? So now that's already been done. Let's zoom in a little bit. We have various options here. We have the overall opacity, of course, so we can change how strong the effect is. We have the smoothing effect that we can increase or decrease, but really where things get exciting, and this is where I'm gonna leave it at 100% for now to show you this full smoothing amount, is these reprocessing layers that we have here. So the smoothing intensity, I can choose a stronger intensity, and it doesn't just change opacity, it reprocesses a smoothing effect, or a lower intensity, it reprocesses a smoothing effect. And over time, as you play with it, you'll start to get a feel for how these are different. So sometimes more is not always more, less is not always less. It has to do a lot with the nature of your shot. Play around the different smoothing intensities. Every time it reprocesses, you're getting a whole new sort of, we call it data, but you get a whole new set of pixels to see how they're looking. Let's zoom in just a little bit more. And now we're gonna play with the secondary smoothing because let's say you have it, it's kind of smooth, but you wanna really smooth it out. You can pull that up and it really creates an extra soft smooth. This is too much, way too much, but between the smoothing intensity the smoothing amount and the secondary smoothing, you can then couple it with a texture recovery radius. So let's turn that up a little bit or a lot to show you there's a lot of texture. This radius uh, determines how much texture is extracted from the original image. So the original image is preserved in the layer stack and SKN will reprocess the texture based on the radius. So if I choose a smaller radius, it'll reprocess that. It is effectively a frequency separation process of sorts. So what we're doing here really is frequency and texture management. And we find our balance, like a little more smoothing into the texture, maybe a little less texture, maybe a very broad texture, just to show you an example. Here's a tight texture, very tight. And if I turn that up high, you can see it's all looking fake and terrible. But when you find the balance, when you come in and go, how about that much with a little less texture recovery, not quite that much secondary smoothing, maybe I'm gonna blur a little bit less a little bit more on there. I can see where this is on and off. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast now, which is right here available to me. This is for my, you know, a lot of times when you uh, do automatic skin smoothing like this, contrast is something you lose kind of quick. So this brings some of that back. I can also brighten and darken a little bit if I feel like it's not quite right. Excellent. That's looking pretty good. And then I have the hue balancer. What SKN does is it calculates an average skin tone after it selects the skin and analyzes it. It'll calculate an average skin tone and put it across the entire skin mask. It starts at a default of 30%. Capture One users will be familiar that this balances the skin all into one hue. Now, as you can see, because the mask spilled over into her hair and lips, pretty common, that the entire lips became the same tone as her skin. Now, balancing red and yellow is pretty common. And even on the makeup or the cheeks, if you want, it's a pretty common thing that happens because all skin tone in the digital space exists between red and yellow. Now, do I suggest using hue balance at 100%? No, not really. But if you do use it pretty high and the average that it found was a little more pink or a little more yellow, you can adjust that with the hue adjuster below, a little redder, a little more yellow, etc. All of these parameters can be double clicked. The title of them can be double clicked and they reset. So let's say we have a decent setup here. We like how this is working, cool. We go back to our main page and right here immediately, you just go to tone and hit play. It's gonna run the process using the mask that we already modified. It found an automatic mask, but then we modified it by removing, you know, I masked out the lips, et cetera, et cetera. So it pulls that mask. It knows you modified it, so it keeps it. Now on the main page, we were just on grade, but on the main section, if you will, of tone, now we have a lot of different options here. Apart from the main overall opacity, we have a general desaturation, which can be very, very powerful, an overall hue shift, in case you need to modify that. It's a corrective procedure more than a creative one. Okay, and of course this mask is still modifiable right now if I wanted to. Now in the midtones, for example, let's say I want to give her a deeper tan. I can take 
the brightness down because this is HSB replacement, the way the layer stack works. It's kind of hard to explain what it is, but it's not just simply a curved layer or exposure. It's actually very, very smart and tends to give us a very natural result. So if I were to reduce the brightness, give her a deeper tan, and maybe add some tone to it, maybe a little yellow. It's a little strong right now, right? Take the desaturation down to make the skin tone a little more natural looking, maybe a little more yellow. And then you think, wow, it's really dark and, and it's overkill. And that's fine. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's do some light shaping. At the bottom, we have the highlight intensity. I can turn that up and you can see where the highlights are, but I can choose the range of the highlights anywhere I want. I can push this button, this button, and just get wider and wider highlights or tighter, tighter, and tighter, and tighter highlights. Okay, so I'm going to choose right about here. Find me a balance that works okay. I kind of like the light shaping, but it's all too strong. No big deal. I take my overall opacity down, maybe like a 65%, and maybe take the saturation down further because then I can go to grade. And I can choose one of 25 different sort of uh, gradient maps that but it, give it a color wash, if you will. It's not really to replace the color. We've already chosen our main core tones, whether we use mid-range or shadows like I didn't show you that but I can put some reds into the shadows make it more red if I want etc make it a little darker and then here I can come and add a grade maybe a light grade or a darker grade or a really light grade and I can cha change the opacity of it change the blend mode to you know overlay it's all way too strong that's okay we can take the saturation down some more take the intensity down I can add contrast if I want feel like maybe a little more yellow, a little more desaturation and not quite as intense. It went from that to that. Now we have some cool light shaping and some toning across our clean skin. But now I'm going to zoom in again to show you some of our cleaning process. Let's say that we decide we like the toning, but the skin texture we need to change. Okay, so we turn that folder off temporarily. Because we use the HSB replacement, we have to reprocess pixels on that. So we're going to leave that information alone for now. It's still there. We go to cleanup come back to our main cleanup page and go to our advanced button in the bottom right to get all these options up. Then we can take the texture recovery down even further, increase the smoothing because that's, that's what I want, um, and a little more intensity on the smoothing as well. Something like this, that'll work. I'm going to reduce the contrast. Okay, cool. Now, I've changed it, but when I turn on tone, it doesn't reflect that. Ah, until I go to tone again when I'm selected on the folder and choose reprocess. Now to pull the data from below and bring it up still preserving all your tone settings see that so we can constantly play back and forth from an original image like this to this and of course everything's adjustable constantly which is the party piece of this panel you can constantly adjust things so i can just take the overall opacity down there if i really really want and again if i need to change something on the cleanup side turn off tone go to cleanup come back here let's take the smoothing down and the overall opacity down go back to tone turn it back on reprocess brings that data back up there you go it's a very subtle change there okay so we went from this to this and that's just a natural sort of result as opposed to something where we deepen the skin a lot or brighten the skin a lot or do some heavy grading on the skin if we really want but that's the kind of the, how fast it can work and in talking to you i've taken about 10 minutes maybe but all this can happen in under a minute to get you results and everything can be saved as a preset so you can have your cleanup set um, that you'd like for this shot or maybe the entire set. So you save the cleanup and then once you open up the rest of the image from the same set, you can apply that cleanup and of course for tone as well. So that's a quick overview. There's a lot of detailed videos that I recommend that you do watch on our YouTube to show you more in-depth things about each function. But that's kind of the overview of what you can do with SKN and very, very quickly. Unless you're trying to do something very, very specific with cleanup, for the most part, the automatic cleanup functions of SKN can give me an edit that I like in 90 seconds. Now tone on the other hand can be used for so much. Even if I do a manual cleanup edit, dodging and burning and manual frequency separation and all these specific details because I want a specific look, toning is still very useful to me. So that's why we say it's two panels in one. You don't have to use tone, you don't have to use cleanup, but you can definitely use both as well.